Hello, this is the Photo Op Podcast, the podcast where we talk about all things photo and video. I'm Ben Lucas. And I'm Stuart Malentis. And today we are continuing part two of our AI chat with our amazing guest, Ulysses Lynn. So hey uh, we we cut off literally like 30 seconds ago in recording time. So we are going to try and pick up right exactly where we left off. Um, if you didn't hear the last episode, there's a link down in the description. So go, go check that out. We're just going to dive right in. So last time we were talking about how um, your friend thinks that he's an artist because he puts prompts into AI art. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he maintains that it is real art and that he's making the art. So he's the artist. Um, so that, that yeah, he, he's probably the first person I've heard of that actually believes something like that. And he's probably not the last. He's Even though he's the first person you've heard, heard of, of, he's not the first person I've heard of done that <laughs> because the internet hole goes deep. So um, one, th- one thing that I will say is there is this huge discrepancy when you look um, at like, let's say YouTube tutorials, okay? Mm-hmm. When it comes to YouTube tutorials for painting, all of the tutorials are, here's how to get better at this technique. Here's how to do this thing. Here's how you can replicate the style of this brush stroke. Here's how you mix colors properly when you're doing, you know, physical medium, whatever. When it comes to AI art, it's not, here's how to prompt better. Here's how to, you know, get whatever. It's all, here's how you can work from home in one hour a week and make, you know, a hundred grand a year. It's all of those like lazy, get rich quick. (laughs) But that's literally all the videos are of just like, I made all this money by doing nothing. And I think the big problem is people think that it's a shortcut instead of art. Yeah, I well, and I think the general public has a very warped view on how art is made in general. Like, there's a bi- uh, there's a big perception. You see this with a lot of uh, we scream at our canvas, we drink yeah. a little bit, we slap <laughs> someone, and then boom, art. You see this a lot. Like, <laughs> you know, there's a there's a subreddit uh, choosing beggars, which is full of these kind of stories where it's a, a, a maybe a majority certainly a lot of them are people going to an artist and saying make me this thing you know i i should only have to pay you like 10 bucks because it's going to take you like you know 30 seconds right like you paint these all the time look at your instagram is full of these it must take you you know no time at all no thought the general public i think has a perception that art is super easy and that once you've practiced enough or made it to that bar that you just crank them out and it's and it's no problem at all and so uh, and then additionally, the general public sees a lot of technologies just like magic. Like I just ask it to do things and it does those things. I ask it to find me something and it finds the thing. I, t- I take a picture with my phone that should look terrible, but because my phone is stacking like, you know, eight exposures and doing all this computation to it, um, the photo looks really good on the other side. Like people are very used to just either in the art world or in the tech world, just magic coming out and not seeing the work behind that and so they see a tool like this where they're like it's like the same thing i just give it a few words i give it an idea and something comes out that work that tracks with everything else i'm aware of um so i can see that perspective yeah one of what i there's one begging chooser post that uh choosing beggar post that stands out in my brain of someone's like hey i want this like uh quilt or Mm -hmm. or no it was like a crocheted blanket or something and it was like i'll pay you like 50 bucks and the person's like um no that's like a thousand dollars because it's several hundred hours of my time plus two hundred dollars of materials and they're like well i can buy this online for you know 50 bucks i'll pay you 50 bucks this is the one i want it's like then buy it online yeah (laughs) what what do you what what is happening so there's insulting to the artist Mm -hmm. yeah that's i i think that's the other key of it too of just like ai is almost insulting to the artist of like we talk about like oh studio ghibli or paint me in the style of pointillism or something but Mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. it's when it's hey make me in the style of this living photographer who's working right now it's like whoa dude like you can hire them. Yeah. Like you, you know that like they're looking for. It's one thing to say Annie Leibovitz, but it's totally something else to be like, oh, this photographer who makes like lives in New York and maybe makes a hundred grand a year type thing of just mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. they're not they're not mega millionaire rich ballin, but like they're still an artist. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna come in here and kind of present a different sort of point of view, Please. which is don't people who are buying or in some way procuring art know what they want? 
No. So I'm kidding. <laughs> continue. Well, okay. <laughs> I, I, if I just want something funny to show off to my friends and it's kind of meme worthy and you know, I just want it done quickly, do I want to pay an artist hundreds of dollars to make it? No, I just want something put together right away. Which is valid. And mm-hmm. AI can do that. But if alternatively I wanted a really, really nice painting for like my mom's wall in her new house or something like that. I I probably wouldn't go to AI art, right? I would I would commission a, a painter to to make that painting, right? So I I think what aren't we just kind of presuming that people are just they don't know what they want when they actually do and they know how to get it. Let let's put a slight twist on that, right? So so option number one is you're just trying to do something funny and meme with your friends. So like um there's one cosplayer that I shot a photo of where he made a full Gundam suit, but it's an R2 D2. So it's R2 Gundam. And it is funny yes. and meme. And if you put R2 Gundam into mid journey, I bet it'll come up with some hilarious options, right, right? right? So that's funny, meme, whatever. But um then you're like, okay, but here's this second instance where I wouldn't do that. Well, it's still paying for your mom is personal use types of thing. I think the problem that we're getting into is when you're using it for commercial and you're selling or making money off of this AI art. When you're doing stuff for personal mm-hmm. use of like, mm-hmm. I want to play D&D with my friends. Like, I want to have a picture of a cool villain that I can show them rather than have to describe. Yeah, Hard throw it into Mid Journey, yeah. cost a dollar or whatever. Of like, great, sounds, sounds awesome. But like the um, San Francisco Ballet posted this um this beautiful art of like a mouse in a crown for their nutcracker promotional and people were like wow this is gorgeous what artist did this and they said oh we use midjourney mm-hmm. an artist's job was previously to make posters for mm-hmm. the ballet and now they're using ai I art instead but before the factory people made let's say souvenirs or handicrafts or things as the name suggests by hand and then Factories came in, you know, industrial revolution. And um, didn't we as a society kind of get used to the fact that this used to be all made by hand in these small cottage industries at biggest, you know, or just an individual artist or craftsperson, artisan. And, you know, time has passed since then and we come we come to expect a certain diff- different levels of quality, right? So if I go to a different country and I just want a cheap souvenir, right? All that stuff is made in a factory somewhere, um, and I'm okay with that. I know that it's not going to be quote authentic and it's going to be mass produced, but if I wanted something a, a lot nicer in quality and quote authentic, I, I could find a local artist if I wanted to. And a lot of people do that. Um, so I guess, I guess I'm trying to just bring up again, like w- what are the expectations here? Like, and well, it kind of goes back to also like just using AI art as like a tool, kind of like we had talked about earlier, Ben, um, so I have, yeah, a, I have a question for both of you. So I, I, my perception of the situation around AI art is people don't like that it's replicating artists' styles, especially living artists. You can name an artist and, you know, make me a, you know, dog in a hat in this style and get that out the other side. I think that's one of the biggest problems. Would all of the, maybe not all, but would a substantial number of the problems of AI art go away if you couldn't name an artist? If you said like watercolor or pointillism or whatever, you you do, you can only do styles and you can't do, like you can only do general art genres, I guess, and not a person's name, a specific person's style. Would that eliminate a lot of the problems? I would argue... Uh- even without AI, it kind of already happens. Um, so, for example, um, for those of you who watched, uh, have seen movies by Makoto Shinkai, he's like a, a incredible, incredible <laughs> uh, director. But also, he he like made some of his earliest films entirely by, by himself, himself yeah. aside from like the soundtrack. But anyhow, so that guy, like a lot of what he does is these digital paintings, like probably in Photoshop, of just real places. Like real places in Japan, like very um, like agrarian or like suburban, and it's just like of maybe like a train station that has no one around and like the blue sky. So that was like very him. But then a whole bunch of other artists started being quote inspired by him, or you could argue being co- copying his style to the point where it's like it. When you look at that, you could be like that's Shinkai's style, or you could just be like it's its own thing now. Like it's blossomed into a whole movement. Um, 
Yeah. Well, there. So there is a photography technique. Um, I'm gonna butcher his last name. I want to say it's the Ben Benzier technique. Brenzier technique. Uh, we're using Benzier. Tel- Benzier. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry out there. I pronounced it wrong. Um, but it's where you use a telephoto lens and do a panoramic with it, which actually is what I did for the picture right behind you. Um, it's so that he can get that medium format look out of a not medium format camera. He can get a wider field of view with all of the depth of field that a telephoto lens has to offer and then people started immediately copying that so i totally get what you're saying about of like oh this is has kind of created its own style and now there's a ton of people that that do it um but it's it it feels different when it's like hey i would really learn to be able to do this pointillism type style and it's like if you are so excited to learn that that you you did it and you created it and you copied it that i that at least to me feels completely different than I, I i said some words into a machine and it spit it out aren't you aren't you happy that i honored you and it's like is it though <laughs> hmm. well the, the, of like of like uh i put in the effort to copy and emulate you because i'm so excited about this and i made a thing versus I, I told this chat bot one sentence. It took 30 seconds of my time and look, it's you like the, those just feel different. What it's kind of like the difference between, um, uh, between cultural appropriation and, and, you know, wearing it because you're honoring the culture. Right. Mm-hmm. It, to, at least that's the level of difference that it feels like to me. Um, well, it feels like we're gatekeeping by effort level in a certain point. Right. Like, oh, this this took you too... This was too easy. It was too oh, short a period you, of time. you use your camera in auto? That was too easy if you don't shoot manual and you're not a That's real photographer. That's what I'm getting at. Is, then where's the effort cut off point? That's like, true. <laughs> That's true. And I could be totally wrong here. Um, one thing that uh, I want to make sure that we do get to, let's let's roll back to your to your friend who puts in um, uh, a chat, chat prompts, right? Mm-hmm. He considers himself an artist. And... If he decided one day, he's like, you know what? I am so good at this. My art prompts are amazing. People love it. He quits his job and he goes to sell his art prompts. Can he do that? That's a thing. Yeah, you can sell. There are people that sell prompts. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's fascinating. Yeah. No, no, no. But what I mean is like, can he... Can he legally do that or morally do that of just like he's using Legal. stolen artwork into a stolen thing and selling a work that he can't copyright? And I actually have an ace up my sleeve on why he can't copyright. There are, <laughs> there are marketplaces for selling prompts. So uh, he can do that. Is it morally correct? When, when you say I selling prompts, do you, mean, do you mean the word phrase? The words. Or, for a is, particular it, style. or is it the finished of a phrase? Like it's usually the it's usually the uh, the words used to guide a particular style. So you sell you sell the prompt, and it says a bunch of things. It says like you know I'll I'll give you a for example, and I want you to pinpoint what part to me because I don't understand. I'm less familiar with AI. Mm -hmm. Um, please draw me R two D two in the style of Studio Ghibli. That's the example we're using. Yeah. Are you do you get a finished photo when you buy that, or do you get the words? r2d2 studio ghibli or like a phrase that like here's how you describe studio ghibli to get it more accurate in this case you're getting getting? the words like studio ghibli but it would be generally that wouldn't work in a prompt marketplace it would be something a lot more specific it's like you know if you're trying to go for let's say a um like a a plastic toy style let's say and so you have you generate a prompt that consistently when you throw a you know uh make a blank Hasbro whatever style, in a plastic He-Man. toy style yeah the, the all of the words used to consistently generate the the plastic toy style that's what you're buying and you put your Got object it. or person or whatever in front of it that you want to generate in that style so you buy those words is that copyrightable slash is that moral i don't know but it exists there are marketplaces where you can sell prompts i don't know if anybody makes a living at it they're generally looked at th- that sort of exploded really quickly where people made these marketplaces and very quickly people were like selling prompts is is garbage you shouldn't do it however it exists it's not looked at a very positively. so so i have a fun ace up my sleeve on why you cannot copyright ai art are, mm. you, are you guys ready for this yeah go ahead all right Stuart, are you familiar with naruto v slater 
Naruto v. Slater, no. Oh, I mean, do Naruto, you yes. remember when PETA sued David Slater because he uh, had a monkey take a selfie, the monkey Naruto? Oh, no. oh yes, I am And they said the yeah. monkey mm-hmm. should own the, the copyright. And the j- courts came back and said a uh, piece of art can only be copyrightable if it was made by a human. Mm. And now that is being used as the court precedent to say AI art is not copyrightable. It was not made by a human. But what if the AI is sentient? Okay. And we can prove it. If it's Skynet's and (laughs) screws us all over, then it's never going to let anyone listen to this episode because we've been bashing it for (laughs) See, the the funny thing is, I just, I, I, now that you i didn't know the monkey's name was naruto but now that you say that that case i'm familiar with it i actually disagree with the ruling i think the animals should be able to copyright like a raccoon that does the paw print painting sure i think i think animals should have copyright capability just for <laughs> just for the memes basically just because it would be hilarious like i think that should be a thing just although, for the memes. although you could you could make the case that like you know if we can def- if we can uh, prove sentience in a being should they not have a copyright ability like if we can prove for sure that like dolphins are sentient cuz we you know are pretty sure they are if they if we had them somehow make art and we can prove that they're sentient shouldn't they be able to copyright their works how do we know that the monkey's not sentient well, I think, I don't know, maybe this is a discussion for a different time, but I, I, I wonder, I mean, this is probably easily Googleable, or we could probably look this up in chat GPT, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what is the whole point or the original purpose or various different purposes of copywriting? I, I, I thought it was mostly to protect, um, to protect financial the yeah. you know, it is. prospects mm-hmm. of the artist. Right? It, t- it totally is. Whereas dolphins don't understand money, right? <laughs> that we know of. That we know of. <laughs> that we know of. Well, so so I guess what I'm getting down to point, is um is okay, so so uh the person who says please draw me R2D2 in the style of Studio Ghibli. Um the artists that create that work for Studio Ghibli and create that art, they're like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa. you are taking our stuff and copying it and and making money off of the style that that we do." Mhm. Mhm. So again, if we could eliminate specific studios, specific artists, all we names have to do is shut it down. From prompting, all we have to do to it, shut okay. down AI forever is is please put in Mickey Mouse into a prompt, and Disney will be like, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, we're done, no more, it's over. <laughs> well, yeah. So so again, like if we get rid of naming specific artists or studios or you know creative houses, whatever, if you can only do generalized styles, is AI art then okay? It feels it feels very weird and subjective because then you're going to start getting into well mm-hmm. well what's a style because I know exactly yeah and and what and when does something cross from generated by an artist to replicated so much that it becomes a style that's right? true um, like there are some foundational um, uh, either there's some foundational artists that came up with a lot of the styles that we know today as just like a general you know, a general style, but usually there's like one or a very small number of artists that actually came up with that at one point and made a big splash because they were the one, the only one doing that. Um, and now it's been replicated enough that nobody cares. I feel like at some point, I don't know if enough people about it, uh, if enough people replicate your work, all <laughs> of a sudden nobody cares anymore. And now it's just a general thing. And now it's just a general thing. Yeah. Um, I, I know um, like impressionism you- wasn't a thing until like a, one or two people did it. That's, then, that's yeah. true. So, so one of the things that I kind of feel about it is if when it's used as a means to the ends, it feels dirty. Mm-hmm. But when it's used as a tool, it was like it's it's a paintbrush or a camera or whatever. It's just a tool mm-hmm. that I have at my disposal. And where do you where do you kind of draw the line at that? I can speak at this because I have used both Dolly and Chat GPT in a professional setting. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> go for it. I don't know if you have. Have you yet? I, I played around with Chat. Uh, GPT. GPT, yeah. Mm-hmm. He he does it for his job, which is mind blowing to me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't officially uh, use AI tools as part of my job. However, they are helpful. <laughs> off, off the record, <laughs> off the record. <laughs> uh, Amazon, if you're watching this, please don't fire me. <laughs> no, I'm not doing anything uh, illegal or, or unethical. Really, what I am doing though is um, nothing. I will say 
no, no AI generated thing, whether it's Dolly or chat GPT ever is a final product in mm. anything that I've used it for so far. It's always been sketching. It's like, what is this? What is this? Uh, like in the case of chat GPT, what is a sound like written out? Or in the case of Dolly, what is this kind of idea look like? And, um, and you know, like Amazon, of course, like we have people in house that'll do all sorts of art and design stuff, right? So what I can do is kind of think like is is throw stuff into Dolly a bunch of times and say, and say to myself like, does this look good? You know, does this kind of like it, usually it's more abstract stuff, but like, does this kind of look good? Does the do these colors look good? Does this color scheme look good with these objects here? If I did this placement, what does that look like? Especially when they added the in the out painting feature, so you can place stuff more accurately. Um, then I can be like, this looks good we can go to the design team and say something like this and they still get paid. They still get paid to make the final product. Um, but they're, they have more guidance. I think that's a way that this could help people a lot is I think a lot of artists struggle with how do I get my client to articulate in a way that I understand what they're looking for. Very fair. You know, I think that's a big, I think that's a big part of your job is you're trying to get, you're trying to figure out, get in your client's head and figure out what do they want how do I make exactly what they want, right? I, um, I very rarely do I have an unhappy client because I'm pretty darn good at my job. If I if it is this in myself, <laughs> um, but no, uh, one of the ones recently is um, they were really mad. They're like, the photo's blurry. I'm like, what are you talking about? Your tack sharp focus was on. And they're like, no, no, no the background. I'm like, yeah, that's called depth of field. <laughs> yes, it's yes. supposed to look that way. It isolates you and makes you the main subject. And you're like, but like we want to see like all the trees and everything. And I'm like, you mean like a cell phone where <laughs> everything from zero to infinity is in focus? Yes. I'm like, <sighs> that's uh -oh. not that's not how cameras work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of echoing what Stuart was saying. I think I've read a lot on Reddit about people saying kind of the same thing. Like, uh, you know, these AI um, things are really good at you know, helping with the brainstorming yeah. process or right? sketching tools or mock-up tools, tools or mock-up tools. And hardly anyone who is a subject matter expert is going to be like, this is, I, I probably no one is going to be like, this is the final product. It's just a means to an end, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, right. Because well, there, the whisker might be off, right. There might be a little detail that's, that's wrong, but you, you have the sort of general idea and you can show it to a client or you just to yourself and you, you modify it, you, you refine it. Showing that. it to yourself is a real thing. So I worked on, or I've been working on a project recently that I've used Dolly to, to, to kind of think about stuff. And then I've actually not even used the AI stuff at all. I've like thrown it away and done an entirely new thing in a piece of design software, uh, it, you know, straight up by myself. But I have started with like i know this looks good and i kind of want to go that that direction i don't i know i don't want to go in this direction and i've been able to iterate that on that way quicker than i would otherwise like even if i'm not the one even with me doing the final work being able to iterate a bunch of times in you know seconds comparatively and knowing the direction that i want to go in instead of cludging around and trying to figure I, it out is a way faster way of working i think that brings it back to um it being used as, as a tool and not as like um, uh, not as, as a, a full thing on its yeah. own. So um, one thing that I will say that I begrudgingly hate so much is I hate this uh, guy replacement feature in Photoshop mm. because it does it better than I can. <laughs> and 99% of the features that come out in Photoshop, I still can do it better. Maybe not as fast because they're getting pretty fast, but for a long time, I could still do it better and faster than the filter could. But now it's doing it better, faster than I can. I'm like, well, you know, F you Photoshop. You have finally bested me and yeah i use the sky replacement feature but i now use it as a tool just like mm -hmm. you said of like it it is a, a piece yeah. of kit in my bag that i can it, i can pull out it, when needed and it's not just art to be fair like you know i've um you know i've used chat gpt to like quickly generate the the structure of like a python script that i'm uh, using for work and it's like you know artists at the very least i can tell you it's coming for developers as well <laughs> like, <laughs> you are, aren't gonna be the only ones out of a job Julie, have you seen that at all <laughs> yeah i mean i was reading stuff on this and i think so my experience in, in terms of coding is you know um things have to you know match very carefully um and 
otherwise your code is going to be riddled with bugs and so i just read you know a lot of this reddit a lot of reddit posts from developers that are like okay so yeah you can generate code um but kind of just as like this loose um as a framework framework if you will um of code um and then you have to go in and refine it a lot um otherwise Mm -hmm. it's just not going to work um sometimes you'll be calling functions that don't exist or like trying to do something with an api and it's just it's wrong um but in terms oh one one good thing about in terms of just code generation is if you're learning as a student it's apparently it's quite powerful in that way um yeah, I, I I've done some a lot of I I would say I did did some reading about like the more like text basis of um like ChatGPT and stuff like that. If you guys want to talk more about that, but I, I know this is more focused on the art. I well, mean, is writing not art I, as well? I mean, ChatGPT like is still <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, uh, I watched a video by John Green where the first minute and a half was "Hello, Hank," and he talks in this weird kind of fashion. And then what you realize is he said that entire thing was written in ChatGPT. I put in the prompt, "Please do a Vlog Brothers video from John to Hank in the style of King James Bible," mm. and so, <laughs> on the topic of will AI art replace us, like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I've there's a lot of things to talk about in this realm of just the text, um, or even music. For example, I heard someone was just like, make some, me a song yeah. that kind of you know reminds me of this particular uh, composer, and I was like, wow, that's that's very impressive and kind of scary. Um, in terms of um, what were you we talking about? I've seen some <laughs> crazy stuff with where they use image generation to generate music, where they, oh, wow. they use it. They use an AI image generator to generate the waveform of songs Whoa. and then analyze that waveform and play it. And it actually works like it works and it makes coherent music, not amazing music, mm-hmm. but it's actually coherent from using an image generation platform that to do that. Crazy. It is, it, it is wild. Like people do not understand the box that we have opened <laughs> so when we when we first started um spitballing ideas for this episode i know we were talking about how um uh if you want to have a bunch of mossy rocks for uh in art textures or yeah, something texturing. then you mm-hmm. just like you know what give me all of these i do not want to draw ten thousand mossy rocks you have the ai do its thing boom you have matte textures of like your that is it's an artist using it as a tool right Mm-hmm. but um it, it, yeah it's it's interesting how much you can do with so little and uh there is definitely it, it's it's the what is uh i've heard this called the hitler hanks spectrum <laughs> of just like are you amazing like tom hanks or are you completely terrible like hitler <laughs> and everyone is on the spectrum of angel to devil type thing and where where on the spectrum and it's kind of like where on the spectrum is ai completely useful tool that should be embraced and evil that's replacing artists and you know getting rid of us um i feel like remember when technology was supposed to make our lives easier so we could spend more time relaxing and now i feel like technology is being like don't worry we'll create all the art for you so you can get back to your office job (laughs) all about those quarterly results (laughs) Well, and it's out to some degree. It's out. All of this conversation is a moot point. It's out of the box now. Like it's a it moot is a point. Thing. It's cow's opinion. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a moot point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's out of the box. And so I think the bigger question to me is like I'm already using AI tools in my job, and I assume a lot of other people are as well. I, I'm, I can't be the only one. Um, and so, what do you do in a world that has increasingly good i I am sure like chat gpt 4 or whatever is going to be a another quantum leap from what we've got now i'm sure further refinements of dolly are going to be like increasingly more impressive at what they can do and introducing more randomization and make stuff look less copied and more original all the time i'm sure we're going to see dramatic leaps in this in the capability of this software so what do you do what do you do like we're not putting it back in the box that's it's a thing you can't it's go going to continue to be no, a thing that's absolutely true we may you know legislate or or legally challenge some particular things i mean maybe it's at the point where it's like yeah you can't you can't make exactly mickey mouse with it because you know that Disney's Ulysses, gonna be the ones you asked earlier it, like is it a fad like i don't think i don't so. think so no i 
In, I, I was talking about a fad in terms of the actual style of mm -hmm. AI art because, like I was saying, with like these YouTube um, videos, yeah. like everybody kind of looks the same. I think that would be a fad for sure. Um, and and mm -hmm. I think I'm, I'm already tired personally of watching them. They were funny for like mm -hmm. a minute, five <laughs> videos. Yeah. Um, kind of going back to the whole. Um, sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, I got someone, someone else locked. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Quick. we were just, I think we were starting to get into it. Like, so what do we, what do we do now that, um, that AI, AI is, is here. A thing? It's oh, here. AI is right, here right, to right, stay. Right. Yeah. I wanted to just say, I think if you, if artists want to still have a strong presence in content creation in our society, society itself needs to have a cultural mentality shift towards the consumer has to really, really appreciate human-made art. Otherwise, mm -hmm. the marketplace, the art marketplace, is just going to be f flooded with AI art, mm -hmm. and maybe people are okay with that. So it, it's, it's kind of like people have to work together for this to happen. It's a it's a mentality shift. So one of one of the arguments that I've seen is uh, we're all familiar with idiocracy. The mm -hmm. smart people don't have kids. The dumb people do have kids. And the end result of that is you have a world of only dumb people. The, <laughs> the idiocracy argument for AI art is you have a bunch of AI art that is based off of all of these artists, right? It has conglomerated all of their artworks and put them all out of business. And because the artist cannot uh, compete on price with the AI, there are no more artists. And because there are no more artists, AI art has nothing else to draw from. Mm, interesting. Like a stagnation point. Yeah, it's mm. basically, it's ba and then it will start kind of just iterating on like itself maybe. And But aren't humans doing that? Aren't human artists iterating on other human artists? There's nothing new under the sun. There's <laughs> <Right>? that. <laughs> I mean, my personal opinion is almost all art is uh, some largely regurgitation of existing art. And it's only like sheer stroke of genius where you're like, whoa, I have literally never seen anything like this person's style before. But that's ex extremely rare, I Which think. is often called outsider art. And there's a reason why it's called outsider <laughs> art. <laughs> because it's from somebody who's generally not an artist doing some totally crazy stuff. They don't have a they don't have a classical background where they were trained to know how to do sec certain techniques or, or replicate certain things or do certain styles. That's why outsider art can be really cool. Is but, somebody right. that doesn't uh, we, have we've that. We've talked background. about this many times of like of like you can break rules when you knew, know them, but mm -hmm. when you're just doing whatever you want and you're breaking all the rules, you're like, it looks bad because of all these reasons. But sometimes it looks good. Once in like a Once generation, in a you get you get this <laughs> outsider artist who's genuinely amazing. And I don't know if it would have come out of a stuff like that would have come out of a traditional artist uh educational background. I don't know. Well, kind of going back to what Ben was saying in terms of uh you know, a lot of artists, let's say hypothetically, are going to lose their job. Um, so that's problematic in terms of their livelihoods, but also in terms of just creating new things, right? Bringing new artistic innovation in, new ideas, new styles. Um, and we're going to see a lot less human made art. And that's problematic in terms, if even from looking at consuming AI art, right? Because then the data set is more limited and it's just, just constant regurgitation. But that being said, I, th I, I, you know, art isn't just generated by uh, artists looking for profit. I think there are people who are just creating content just that's because true. they're passionate about it. And that, that's what AI doesn't have. It doesn't have that creative spirit. And so people Yet. who are really passionate. Stuart, <laughs> stop. <laughs> about, Skynet is coming for us art, all. You know? <laughs> they're going to no. put stuff out there and that's going to keep the data set, if you will, pretty interesting. Um, and that, and you're right though. If if all art was made for profit, I don't think the landscape would look nearly as as good as it does today. Um, as far as the output of art of human artists over Absolutely. generations, right? If it was only ever driven by profit, I think it'd be a sad place. So you're right. Like people are gonna still make art, even if it's not for money. I will say nine times out of ten, I'm making art for money because you know capitalism got to pay bills. Yeah. But uh, I take on projects that I want to do for me because they're right, an right. interesting creative outlet, and I I want to kind of make something that no one's paying me for because because it's something that comes from within, brings personal fulfillment, and brings joy to the people who look at the art I make. 
So yeah, no, absolutely. But there's still, okay, well, if I get put out of work and can no longer become a photographer, what do I do? I have no other applicable skills. Neat. <laughs> what if it, what if there's a profit sharing program? What if that is the, that is the play you can, you choose to upload your work studio into... studio ghibli gets a fraction of a penny for every time <laughs> someone says in the style of studio yeah ghibli. right i mean like radio plays for music i'm like not you, mad about that you upload your stuff into the data set and then when somebody specifically names you to replicate your work you get a penny or whatever folks we have solved right? capitalism and ai here i don't know go. is that acceptable it. i don't know i'm i'm not mad at that idea yeah I mean that's that's what radio plays do. That's what Spotify basically mm-hmm. does. I mean it's it's very like each. It's sort of like the it very much I would think would be like the music angle of monetization where your your radio, your Spotify, your AI, you get hardly anything from. But when you sell your you know real print, your your real painting, that's where you get the big money. Your concert, maybe that's the maybe that's the game, and then maybe you get exposed to more people by being in the data set. I, don't I, know. I think the big problem that artists have right now is exactly what you're saying of like, hey, 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 hey. mid journey is making money. People are paying for credits to create data and that's using my art in its data set. Mm-hmm. And I think that that uh, kickback or profit sharing would absolutely be like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm cool. <laughs> Maybe. I, yeah, and I don't know what if that, it if might that would not be, be enough. For, I don't it know. might not be for ev- everyone, but I feel like that would definitely be a step in the right direction. Mm. What do you think? I mean, I, I kind of question whether um, artists would get more exposure by uh, AI art because it's just so muddled, right? And it's like you see something cool looking and you know it's AI art. Mm-hmm. How do you know it came in part from a particular artist? There would have to be some sort of tagging system, yeah. I think, for the to images. A system for it. And, and there's definitely some kind of issue when you say, give me a hazy sci-fi space hallway that looks like this. And they're like, okay, well, that's clearly the deck of the Tantiv Four from A New Hope of like 100% it got ripped from that. But I didn't say Star Wars in my prompt. You know, it would be a, a difficult technical be, problem. It would be a it, it would be a weird gray area for yeah. sure. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that the money changing hands thing is is a big part of it. I think if I think if like open it if, if, if open you're AI use said, artists pay the artists. Yeah, there's and that. I, and I think if if open AI had come out from the beginning with that or or any of these uh, programs and said like we're gonna do our best to try to profit share, I think people would be less mad but now i mean you know mid journey you you can pay to access it to, you know in unlimited quantities and now uh dolly is implementing a like 20 dollar monthly subscription for unlimited uh, access to not dolly excuse me um open ai is implementing it to access chat gpt as much as you want and have priority in the in the generation queue and stuff um so i feel like now that it's starting to be monetized, people are going to start getting more and more mad to the point where something happens, whether that's profit sharing, whether that's remove anybody that's specifically named and don't let those prompts go through. Um, I mean, they already like don't allow, uh, or at least they do their best to not allow like not safe for work content to be generated on, on pretty much all of these platforms. Uh, Rule 34, um, it's so, going to happen. So if you can basically apply that kind of model to anytime I hear or anytime I, I read Star Wars or Mickey Mouse or whatever, that doesn't generate and it says, no, you're not going to do this just like they do with Not Safe for Work stuff. You know, I, I feel like that's the that's the the club that's going to be used when people start getting mad about monetization when maybe an investment in a sophisticated system that would allow for profit share, sharing might lead to a much better outcome but i don't know depends on how mad artists are going to be yeah yeah (laughs) well uh do either of you guys have any kind of closing thoughts on the state of kind of ai art right now or anything that we haven't haven't really gotten into yeah i think uh we've like a lot of the discussion has been on monetization and the the work you know the profession of being an artist and whether that's going to be seriously threatened um but I think there's one thing that AI can't take away from artists, which is like the fulfillment that you get from creating the art itself. Um, and I've been certainly focusing a lot just kind of as a devil's advocate on the consumerist approach. Like, hey, as a consumer of art, I just want to see beautiful things, funny things, whatever I want to see. And so this is a boon. This is a boon to me as the consumer. Um, but I there's something about 
the actual creation of art that uh, you know machines just can't take away and can actually help with you know like we said as using it as a tool Mm-hmm. When, mm-hmm. when when I gave uh, your intro during the last episode, there is one thing that I did fail to mention. Everyone, this man, Ulysses, is the most incredible artist. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> the most incredible artist I've ever met. And he'll say, no, 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 I'm not good at anything because I never do anything twice. But he literally can do photorealistic drawings. And there was one that you did of like pointillism or charcoal <laughs> sketch yeah, yeah. or... Um, a, Okay, just as a crazy example of how insanely artistic this man's brain is, he's he uh, got bored when we were studying in college. He's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. And he made some Kanye glasses out of Top Ramen, and I took a photo of him. And then what he did instead of writing his essay is he wrote an entire essay, but then he made all of the text white so you can't see any of it. And the only thing that showed up were spelling errors, red underline, and grammatical errors, green underline. And he <laughs> yeah, recreated that. that ramen glasses picture completely in green and red squiggles. <laughs> I have no idea to this day how you did that. It is absolutely <laughs> insane. <laughs> wow, that's... Very, uh, um, yeah, so okay. so when you talk about personal fulfillment you're the, you're the, you you're, you're speaking from a from a yes, experience perspective yes all of your <laughs> art is personal fulfillment you do it because you enjoy it which is amazing i do it because i like having a roof and eating food <laughs> <laughs> So, so I completely agree that a lot of our talk has been um, about the problems of like monetization and stealing and financial incentives. But um, if if everyone was okay and no one was an artist for a living because all of our needs were covered and everyone was doing this for fulfill- fulfillment, would we have a problem with AI art? It's just a new form and a new style. If no sure. one's job was artist because we live in a uh, utopia, like would we care would we be doing this podcast right now it's the star trek model right yeah all of your needs are handled, i, I just so i just think it would, i just think it would be a very different conversation which is probably why we've been focusing on that so heavily yeah i just want to go on record saying i no longer have any association with kanye west <laughs> <laughs> that's fair that's fair just just i have no idea what else to call those glasses <laughs> they are though, yeah. um well, thank you so much for coming by. This has been a fabulous discussion. Again, folks, for all of you listening, this is part two. If you want to hear part one, go down to the descriptions. If we just jumped right into the middle, we absolutely jumped into the middle. This is one conversation beginning to end. We just wanted to break it up into bite-sized chunks for you. So um, thank you so much for coming by the studio today. It's been amazing. Thanks for having me. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with AA art for oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I kind of... I, I like I love the applications of it that I've seen so far, but I also completely um, empathize with the artistic community that's railing against it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the true gray area in tech right now. <laughs> it is it is absolutely the wild west for sure. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much, uh, and we are going to talk about more interesting stuff. Uh, next time we'll we'll have have some more normal episodes that are more kind of photography focused. But I do hope you enjoyed this. Um, just a couple of outro pictures. Remember, uh, you can support us on Patreon if you enjoy discussions like this. Patreon.com slash nom creative, the same YouTube channel you might be watching this on. Um, right now, just a tip jar, but every little bit helps. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. See you next time. See you next time. If you have questions or ideas for future episodes, you can email us at hello at photo-op.show. Watch us on Ben's YouTube channel at non-creative. As in om nom nom. Share this with a friend and you can listen to Photo Op anywhere podcasts are sold. Or downloaded. Because it's free.